What's going on guys? Welcome back. This is the second video to where I am describing the normal distribution. If you didn't watch the first video, highly recommend you do before watching this one because a lot of the concepts I cover in that first video dealing with the symmetry, I'm going to be using in this video. And in this specific video, I'm going to talk about how to find the area for a specific z-score, whether that's to the left of the z-score or to the right of it. So we actually ended off the last video asking how do we find the specific probability for this here for a z-score of 1.23 to the left of 1.23. So if we draw this out right on a normal distribution like we did before, we got 1.23 over here which is to the right of zero. How do we find this area right here? to the left of 1.23. That's what they are asking. The probability that Z is less than 1.23. So I'm actually gonna show you how to do this in two ways. I'm gonna show you how to do it with a table, which I'm gonna leave a link in the description box. You could print it out, you could use it as a reference. I'm also gonna be using a stats calculator and I'll leave a link to that as well in the description box. What I did here was I took the Z table and just drew out a portion of it right, the Z table that is in the link. So a couple of things I wanna mention, I wanna talk about this table before getting into the specifics of this question. The Z score, basically all the numbers on the axis here, they're basically the represented by the first column here and the first row, right? The first row, the, the sort of bolded lines and the first column, that represents the Z score. That represents these figures here on the axis. And then all of these figures in the middle that you see to like four decimal places, that's basically the area or the probability related to that z-score. And this is the important part. It's always the area to the left of the z-score that you're looking at, right? That's another important part for this table here. Sometimes you have tables that give it to you to the right, but most Z tables, when you're looking at them, this area here, these probabilities represent the area or the probability to the left of a certain Z score. Okay, so the easiest one to look at in this table is zero, a Z score of zero. Notice that's gonna be zero and zero over here because notice these are decimals that are going up by tenths Right, so we got 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and in the table you'll see 0 0.3, 0 0.4. I actually skipped a couple and then went to 1.1, 1.2, then I skipped a couple again, went to 1.7, 1.8, but you're basically gonna see a huge column going from zero all the way to like 3.4 or something like that. And then over here, these are hundredths. So notice these are always two decimal places. So it goes 0 0.0, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, and that goes all the way to 0 0.09. I just kept a certain portion just so it could all fit on the whiteboard. So if I'm looking for the probability that Z is less than zero, we already know that that's equal to what? 0 0.5. Well, notice we can see that in the table as well because we got zero and 0, 0.00, so that represents a z-score of zero, and then we got 0.5 here. So the area to the left of that specific z-score is 0 0.5. Okay, so what about this question here? We're being asked, what's the probability that z is less than 1.23? So the z-score is 1.23. So the way we would find that is notice we have to look for 1.2 first, and that's gonna be on the column. So 1.2 is over here, and then we want 1.23. So notice that the second decimal place is three, which is over here. So we would connect the 1.2 and the 0 0.03 right over here, right? So that is the figure that we're looking at, and that's 0 0.8907, and that's actually the answer to this question. Right, that's the probability that Z is less than 1.23. And we found that going 1.2 and then the three, and that gives us the area to the left 
of that Z score and notice we're already being asked for the area to the left. Sometimes you're going to be asked for the area to the right and you're going to have to manipulate this, get an equivalent expression. That's why that first video was important. But we'll get to that in a bit. Right? So the answer to this, this area over here, this probability, it's 0 0.8907. Now what if you were to take that same question and find the probability using a calculator, using the stats calculator? Well, these are the steps you would go through. So you'd go first to the main menu and you would hit stat. There's gonna be a different bunch of options. You're gonna hit stat and then you're gonna hit F5. What F5 is gonna do, you're gonna see it says distribution there. It's just gonna say DIST, which stands for distribution. And then once you hit F5, you're gonna hit F1 and that's gonna take you to the normal distribution. It's gonna say N-O-R-M there short form for normal. There's a bunch of different other distributions, but we're working with the normal distribution here. And then after that, it's going to take you to a new screen and you're going to hit NCD. You're going to hit F2. NCD, this stands for normal cumulative distribution. And then what's going to happen is you're going to go to a screen with these inputs over here. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure this data here, it's filled out as variable, meaning we're just using the normal distribution, right? We're not using a specific list that we're inputting. Now, the lower and the upper bound, if I draw this out again, so we're, uh, we're over here and we're trying to find this area over here, right? To the left of 1.23, you could put the lower bound as just negative 10, right? This goes to negative infinity, but in fact, 99% of the data is already going to be at negative 3 anyway. So if you put negative 10, that's going to be like 99.99999% of the data. You're going to get enough of approximation. So you could put the lower bound as negative 10 there. That's going to take you right to the end, right? Even though this goes to negative infinity, negative 10 is already so far in. Remember, 99% of the data is at negative 3. Right? We're going to go over that in a future video when I talk about standard deviation. So you could input negative 10 for the lower. Now the upper bound, it's what we're working with. We're working with the 1.23. So that's that. This here is the standard deviation. Remember the standard deviation of a normal distribution I mentioned was 1. And then the mean of a normal distribution is 0. And then you would just execute from there. You would hit execute and you would end up getting the same answer that we got before using the table. You'd end up getting the 0 0.8907. So whether we're using the table, right, getting that z-score of 1.23, 0 0.8907, or we're using the calculator following these steps here, we get the exact same answer. That is the area to the left of a z-score of 1.2. Three. Let's do another example here. So let's do the probability that Z is greater than 1.71. So if we draw this out, there's our normal distribution, zeros in the middle. We got 1.71 and we want to find the probability that Z is greater than 1.71. So that is going to be this over here. We're going to be looking for that area. How are we going to do that? Let's use the table first. Well, if you remember, the problem with the table is that it gives us the area to the left of the z-score. It doesn't give us the area to the right of the z-score. So if we were to take 1.71, find it on the table, we got 1.7, and then the second decimal place is 1, so that's over here. 0.9564, that gives us the area to the left of 1.71, not to the right of it. So what we have to do is using the equivalent expressions that we went over before, we have to rewrite this here as 1 minus the probability that z is less than 1.71, like that, right? Both of these are equal, right? The probability that z is greater than 1.71 is the exact same as 1 if everything was filled in minus the probability that z is less than 1.71, right? Using those equivalent expressions that we did in the first video. And then this here, we can now use the table because we know that the probability that Z is less than 1.71, meaning all of this area over here, 
is going to be in the table because it gives us the area to the left of a certain z-score. So if we find 1.7, 1.71, that's over here, this 0.9564. So we would do 1 minus 0.9564, right, which is all of that area there. And the remaining area is going to be what we are looking for. And when you do that calculation, you end up getting 0 0.0436. So that is the answer. That's this area. That's that probability right there that I drew out. Now, what if we were to use the calculator? Well, you would go through the exact same sequence because we're still using a normal distribution, right? So main menu, stat, F5, F1, F2, and then you get to this input screen here. Now the data is still going to be variable. Make sure it's variable. Now the lower and the upper is going to be different now. Remember the lower before we used as negative 10 because we were looking for the area all the way to the left. But now we're looking for the area all the way to the right. So we're going to use positive 10 and that's going to be the upper bound. Right? The lower bound is always to the left, the upper bound is always to the right. So in this case, the upper bound is 10, and the lower bound is 1.71. Right? Does that make sense? So before this was the upper bound, it was uh, 1.23, that was the upper bound. Lower bound was negative 10. In this case, the lower bound is 1.71, the number to the left. Upper bound is going to be positive 10. Right, and then standard deviation is still one, mean is still zero. And then when you execute that, you would get this number right away. So that's what's nice about the calculator. You don't have to worry about rearranging stuff, getting equivalent expressions, right? Getting that area, using only the area to the left of a certain z-score. With the calculator, you could get that answer right away and you should get that answer. Make sure you're getting that answer when you're inputting this. If not, then you got to make sure that uh, you're going over your calculator work. Okay, so that's how you do that. So whether you're finding the probability is less than something, that's a little easier using the table because you can get that number right away. But if you're finding the probability that z is greater than something, it's a little tougher because you have to find an equivalent expression where you're using the z table um, to the left of a certain z-score, right? So we rewrote it like this, and we ended up getting that final answer.